For sociology student Tim, last night's party went on a little longer than planned. He's still dozing comfortably in bed, even though he has an important final exam today. But his body is still recovering, because it will be doing great things again today, and Tim won't even have the slightest idea about what his body's competing with most of the time. His ear, for example, only 0.2 seconds pass between alarm and reaction. But there's a trio in Tim's body that works much faster. Hammer, anvil and stirrup, the three smallest bones in the human body. These three operate at up to 20,000 vibrations per second. A direct comparison with a pneumatic hammer shows how incredibly fast this is. A pneumatic hammer moves so quickly that the individual impacts are not visible to the naked eye. The machine hammers into the bricks at around 85 pressurised hits per second. Even faster is the guitar string. Five times as fast, in fact. Let's be honest. Can you see the individual movement of these strings at 440 vibrations per second? Our ear can only wiggle wearily at speeds like that because it works almost 50 times faster. That's why it can distinguish sounds with a hundred thousandth of a second between them. Because of our super fast ear, the brain can immediately give the command to wake up. For Tim, that now means get a move on. There's no time to lose. Normally, he goes down step by step, but now every second counts. And Tim comes down from a height of a good one and a half meters in one leap. No problem for him, but a jump like that is not normal at all. Tim's knee really shows what it can do here. It can withstand a load of up to 1.5 tonnes, the weight of a small car. In practice, with a jump like this, it's around 600 kilograms. This requires a complex construction in the knee. The kneecap, the meniscus and numerous tendons hold the bones and muscles of the thigh and lower leg together during every jump and step. The tendons in particular are extremely resilient. The comparison with an adhesive strip shows just how special the tendons are. Both are thin strips and have to withstand weights. But how does the industrial competitor perform? We do the test with a single brick. Can the sellotape take the weight and do the job of the tendons? Here we're dealing with 3.5 kilos. In human knees, on the other hand, we're dealing with this pile here, weighing in at around 600 kilos. The result for the product from the DIY store is clear. It can't be compared with the performance of a knee. The adhesive tape is about 200 times weaker than the versatile human tendon. It's a good thing knees are so strong, otherwise jumping like this, even if it's rarely necessary, would be impossible. Tim barely has time for breakfast. Get dressed quickly, a bite to eat and off to university. Extremely hectic. However, doing several things at once poses no problems for our brain. Multitasking is something every human brain is capable of. It coordinates balance, controls breathing, processes information from phone calls and so on and so forth. All this with a combat weight of 1.4 kilograms. That's how much an average brain weighs and beats a comparable laptop by a long way. This is because the technical device can perform around 40 billion calculations per second. And Homo sapiens, researchers assume almost 100 trillion. In case you don't know exactly how many 100 trillion is, the human brain is comparable to 2,500 laptops. With all this multitasking going on, it's a good thing Tim doesn't actually forget to rush off to university. To get to the exam on time, Tim takes his bike. Well, here again, we see a peculiarity in the comparison of man versus object. To get around, we can use both the bicycle and our skeleton. 
Both consist of many individual parts and are basically a frame. But a human being has hundreds of joints and bones. To replace all these parts of the body, you'd need at least six bicycles. But now, it's time to hit the road. For Tim, cycling through the city requires full concentration. His eyes constantly wander over the area in front of him, the road. He constantly scans the surroundings to recognize potential dangers, as well as to find the most favorable route. This is made possible by the most active muscle in Homo sapiens, the eye muscle. It moves the eyeball an unbeatable 100,000 times a day for an entire lifetime. No question about it, this is better than any high-performance camera. The eye scores with another top performance. Tim's eye focuses around 50 times a second. Even our camera can't keep up with that. At least, not with a normal recording setting. It only takes 25 pictures a second. With each of these 25 pictures, the aperture opens and closes and focuses. So the eye is twice as fast. Only when it comes up against special settings and expensive high-speed cameras does the eye have to admit defeat. But the human eye always has a clear advantage over the technical eye. We can decide for ourselves when to look where and judge situations. The camera can't do that. Tim still makes it to the exam on time, even though his heart is now beating like crazy. The heart, the engine of the human being, so to speak, now pumps blood cells through the body and supplies all the muscles and cells with fresh energy. Tim's heart drives his body the same way a car engine propels a vehicle. It beats 70 times a minute on average and 200 times during sporting activities. Five to six litres of blood are pumped through the two chambers of the heart every minute and up to 30 litres during exercise. Over an average heart lifetime, that's a staggering 200 million litres. For this amount of fluid, we'd have to fill this hall with crates of drinks 50 times over. Even the most enduring car engine will not consume this amount of fuel. The human heart is thus another of the countless miracles in our body. The comparison with objects from our everyday lives shows how phenomenal we humans really are. Whether Tim will actually deliver his best performance in the exam remains to be seen. His body certainly will. Every day, a new 